Hello. It's so good to see you here. I'm so glad. We are live. It's not a Draw Tip Tuesday. It's a Draw Tip Friday today. And I can see that a few people are watching, which is fantastic. That makes me so happy because this is kind of a, you know, impromptu thing that I want to do. And um, today I want to give you a few tips. Um, that's why I called it sort of Draw Tip Friday. Um, as you can see, um, just first I want to say hello. Hello, Eliza. Hello, D Dina, Dinah, Priscilla. I see that you already commented here, so I hope you're hanging out here watching this. Um, Van Gogh, yes, Eliza. Well, well spotted. Um, this is my version of uh, Van Gogh's room right behind me which um, I thought would be a, a great place to do today's live session with. I also did not check my hair before going live, so I'll check it right now. Um, that is not helping at all. Anyway, <laughs> hi everyone. So, um, why am I choosing to broadcast from Van Gogh's uh, room today? Well, it is because today I want to give you a few tips for mixed media journaling. Because this Monday, mixed media journaling, the course is going live at sketchbookschool.com. And um, I'm very excited about it. And the thing about mixed media journaling is that whatever you create, you are an artist. And a lot of people I find it really hard to call themselves an artist, but I think with mixed media journaling, it's actually you, fo you need to really follow your feelings, your, you, you know, you, you just express whatever happens at that moment and you just react to whatever happens in your head or in your body or around you or uh, to anything that you find, like scraps of paper and that kind of stuff, colors that really you know, somehow um, appeal to you. And one day that can be something completely different than the other day. And it means that if you create with all these things that come from you, you are an artist. So what better place to present this whole thing than in an artist's room? Um, and of course, the proportions are off and the perspective isn't right. And it's all good because it's still art. So anyway, I'm really good to see that. Uh, I'm really happy to see that uh, people are trickling in from all over the world, which is amazing. Um, so uh, from California, from Utah, what else? Idaho, fantastic. Virginia, great to see all of you. Um, so... If you haven't signed up for a mixed media journaling, the course, um, I really want to urge you to do so. <laughs> and um, because it is really fun and you will feel like an artist. I'm really looking forward to it, especially after taking the iPad course, which was our previous course at Sketchbook School. Um, I really devoted my, my drawing time on the iPad. I took like this whole challenge for myself to draw every day on the iPad, which was fantastic because the iPad has all the art supplies that you need just in Procreate. But now you can't see this, but I am surrounded by tubes of paint and ink and everything that I just really pulled out of my, the shelves that I have here um, in Van Gogh's room. Um, things that I just have, also household items. You don't have to run to the art supply shop to um, make art, to make mixed media journal pages. So that's what I want to show you today. Um, I want to show you the stuff that you already have and you might not even know that it will come in handy. So first of all, you need a little bit of space. Uh, because you are going to surround yourself with all kinds of things. What is mixed media journaling? It's anything. You can draw, paint, collage, um, and all those things 
together. You can use photos, you can uh, use things from um, uh, things that you printed, things from magazines, papers, old books, um, scrap papers, found items, anything will do as long as you feel like it fits on the page and it fits within the theme or the feeling that you have at that moment. The beautiful thing about mixed media uh, journaling is that you can write in it, you can draw, you can use line, uh, but you can also paint and if you have done something that you don't really like, you just paint over it or you use collage to cover it up and it's still in there so it, beca it becomes a, literally a very layered um, piece of art, which I think is super fun and super interesting because you can still feel, if you look at the art, you can still feel that there's more below the surface. Okay, so one thing very important, it will be messy, you need to deal with that and um, you need just a table to spread everything out so you can find all the, all the materials that you could be using. Second of all, if you're going to be painting, gluing, all that, you're gonna get dirty hands. So, very important, always have um, paper towels. Um, within reach. Um, one of the things that can also be very helpful is baby wipes. Oh, that's nice. Baby wipes. I have a different package that might help better. Yeah, that's better. Um, it's just those, you know, wet wipes to wipe off your hands, but it can also uh, be very helpful um, for your pages to wipe off uh, excess glue, that kind of stuff. Uh, don't be too precious about your pages either because you might just spread a lot of paint on it and then it might just, you know, um, get around the corners and you'll have some paint on the other side of the paper. You can all use that in, in your um, journaling practice. Very important too, uh, to use a journal or a sketchbook or whatever that uh, can lay flat. That's really handy because if it like doesn't lay completely flat, it's just a little bit annoying if you're putting glue on it or whatever. Um, and the paper has to be heavy weight so it can take wet media. Um, if you go to the art supply shop or even look at your shelf because you might actually have a suitable sketchbook for it, um, look for uh, the mixed media type or maybe even watercolor, uh, the heavy, a little bit heavy weight uh, and of course the pages might buckle because you just put a lot on it it's fine and it, at the end if you fill a whole uh, sketchbook with it your sketchbook might not close that that perfectly <laughs> anymore it might oh, be a little bit open because of all the layers in it but that will be lovely it will show all the all the thoughts and all the moments and all the time that you have been uh, putting in it. So uh, those are some very practical things. The um, uh, paper towel, uh, you will probably need scissors, definitely glue, any kind of glue will, uh, will work. Um, well, I don't know if any kind of glue will work. We'll need to find out. But um, I think this is a very good... Um, glue. Uh, you might want one of these to, you know, if you want some more precision work for your collage or anything, but if you don't have it, you can also use your scissors or just rip off paper, which is probably actually better. Um, and then what kind of stuff do you have, you know? Of course you have crayons, everyone has crayons, so we can use those, definitely. Um, even just looking in my stash of art supplies, I have these really fun things, which is, um, they are, um, what's it called? Um, tempera, solid poster paint. So they are sort of like sticks that um, you can use for color, maybe a, a play with that a little bit later. Let's see what colors I have. Um, yeah, so that one maybe. Mm -hmm. Getting ideas. Um, and then 
anything, anything really. I mean, grab anything that you have and see if it works and if you can use it in your pages. Uh, because it's also layered and you will be uh, using glue, you might want some kind of paint, acrylic paint works really well. Um, but you can also think about inks. This is uh, acrylic ink, which is, uh, which can come in really handy. I have um, a gold one, actually. That might be cool to use. And um, what about these kinds of things? Um, ink pads for stamps. Of course, you can also use stamps, like letter stamps, alphabet letter stamps, but also all kinds of shapes that appeal to you. You can create your own stencils to create patterns or repeating patterns or anything like that. So there's an endless range of things you can do for um, uh, for for mixed media journaling. I have another stamp pad that I just found. I don't even know how much juice is still in there, but maybe I'll find out. And um, those are just a few things that I, you know, picked up here. And I think you can just start doing this thing with whatever you have. Oh, other stuff like household items. Think about uh, bubble wrap. That will be really fun to create patterns with, with paint. I did a um, Draw Tip Tuesday on that, so look that up on YouTube. And something like that. this, I don't know how I'm going to use it, but I purposely did not throw it away because I'm like, I like the color of the paper. I kind of like the lettering on it. I can use parts of that to collage. And the other day I bought flowers and they came in this nice thick black paper. I probably can use it. I mean, if I just rip off a little bit of it, it might actually be super useful. I even found like found items you know I did not throw this away I'm very much a, someone who throws away everything because it's in my way now I'm like hmm can I use it I might use it I'm not throwing it away so I'm I think I will start um, a box or something in which I will collect all these things so it doesn't drive me crazy all the stuff <laughs> okay, so let me just organize and I want to show you a few things that might be helpful to get started because I am, um, uh, oh, look at that. Uh, Eliza actually has been doing some mixed media she um, uh, journaling. She has tried sewing buttons in the book, which is great. Of course, you can do that too. I love it. So even, you know, even that, look if you have some fun buttons that could be used. Um, Dana says, I love cheap craft paint for art journaling. Um, Stephanie says that she loves my background. So do I. I'm in a very nice room today. Um, here, Eliza says that she's dedicating, dedicating a handbook to journal. So, um, yeah, there will be, you know, there's, there's just think about what you have, think about what you can use. And the craziest things can suddenly pop up and be the perfect addition for your journal page. Now, I have to say, I am not like experienced in um, mixed media journaling. I'm very excited to learn a lot about it. I'm very excited to uh, dedicate the following weeks to it. Um, so, but today I, d I do have some ideas how I can um, already start preparing for next week. Uh, and I want to share that with you and maybe you can prepare a little bit too. So I think I'll uh, switch cameras, maybe, maybe not. Ooh, yes. I'll show you that because I'm, I'm excited about that too. Um, another thing that um, you probably have, um, an old credit card or a plastic card, a hotel key, something like that. This is um, a museum card, which is um, a card that gets me into museums here in, Am in, uh, in the Netherlands, but it has expired. And this is really great actually to... Um, you can use the corners to um, uh, 
uh, help rub something in or whatever, but you can also distribute paint with it very evenly. That's something that I discovered that makes me really happy somehow. So <laughs> um, let's get going because what you can do in preparation, you can prepare some pages, for example, because um, mixed media journaling is a lot of layering. You know, you start with a layer and then you start gluing something on top and then you start to find the colors that you like for, for that uh, uh, page. And that way you just layer and layer and layer. So sometimes you, there's a lot of waiting time because if you paint the first layer, that has to dry. But you can also prepare a few pages with some paint already so you have that first layer already done. Um, plus... If you um, want to use collage, then you can actually prepare a lot of fun stuff that you can use later. Um, and I want to show you both of those things. So preparing um, a page and preparing some loose items that come in handy later once you start collaging. Um, one thing <laughs> that I did buy uh, just because I'm so curious about it and I don't really understand the whole thing is gesso. I always see it in the art supply shop and then I'm always like, that's not for me. I don't even know what it is. And to be honest, I don't even really know what it is. It's like a primer for your page. And um, I was telling Danny earlier, like a gesso, it's to me, it's so alien. I don't even know how you pronounce it in in Dutch. I think it would be gesso. I guess so. Sorry, I just can't help myself. I had to make that joke. Um, I'm going to show you some stuff. Let's see. Here we go. So I have a, a page here and I have my plastic card. And um, with that, I want to just show you uh, that little thing that makes me really happy. Um, filling a page with just um, that card. So I was thinking, I'm wearing black and white. I was thinking maybe black and white would be a good um, thing to use today. Maybe I can mix a little bit of gray. And also this white paint is so old. It has a little bit of texture that it should not have, but let's see what I can do with this. So I just um, uh, get some paint on that card, and now I just oh, look at that. I can just scrape it and distribute it in such a beautiful, even way. And of course, if you do this with um, um, with a brush, that can be great too because it gives you a lot of texture. But if you want a very even, smooth um, first layer, then that old credit card seriously comes into play. Uh, let's see, here's the baby wipe. That helps me a lot because it's messy. Okay. So that's my first tip. Use a uh, plastic card to um, create smooth surfaces in color. All right. Hang on, I'm, I'm just cleaning my hands because I don't want it to be on the computer and everywhere. Okay. Um, okay, so what I did do, speaking of that uh, gesso thing, I bought transparent gesso. Apparently, you can also uh, buy black gesso, white gesso, and there's also other kinds of primers, but we will learn a lot about that in the course as well. So what I did this afternoon, I just randomly put some gesso on this page. Um, and on purpose, I made it like uh, with a thick texture because I think that is one of the benefits when you use uh, gesso as a primer. Uh, you can also cover things with it. So once you have like, um, done um, some collage, you can put gesso on top of it to bring it all together. Uh, but I wanted to 
just see what uh, effect that has if I would actually do this same thing uh, painting on top of it because the texture might have a fantastic effect. So this is really um, my um, play time and experimenting time and I'm mixing a little bit. It's a bit more black this time. And maybe Look at that. I like that. It has a bit of a cracked effect if I use the credit card again. I like that. That's very interesting. And now I could, um, if I want uh, to have my black and white theme happening, I could um, use white paint or white chalk markers. I would, could definitely use this piece that uh, I did not throw away. Um, and I can create some really great pages. I imagine that um, if you are, um, you know, if you are really following your feelings, your emotions for uh, art jour journaling, for mixed media art journaling, which really is the thing to do. I imagine that black page might be, you know, for a bit of a darker day. And um, you might need some more color on uh, happier days. That's how I uh, feel about it. I mean, if I look at this page, I'm like, oh, it's kind of depressing, but I can use a lot of color on top of it. And then it might actually be a very fun page. It seems like a little bit of a blackboard kind of thing. Okay, so um, those are two tips of uh, how to fill uh, a page and how to, you know, prepare your page. I can come back to this anytime and uh, start uh, layering on top of it. Now you can also do the other thing and not work in your sketchbook, but um, work on uh, paper that you have and make some, um, make some marks, make some elements that you can use for collage later. So let's take a look at um, this, for example, is tracing paper. And I think that's for, um, for collage tracing paper can be really, really handy um, because it's transparent. So you can put it on top of something it might actually be um, really great. So I'm using my uh, stamp pad here and I can just simply do this. You don't have to think about it. I just make a pattern using the squares. And you can do this more neatly, of course, but you know, I don't really have that much uh, patience <laughs> and still because it's the same um, shape and the same color it still does have some feeling of repetition and um, I can use it right away you know I can just rip out a part of this that seems nice to me and let's see I'll take my page this has sort of almost dried and I can just use that on top of it. Use the corners, you know. There you go. Oh, see, now I already smooched it out, which, well, let's just use that whole bit. There you go. I'm already starting arting. How great is that? Good. Um, so that's one of the things that you can do. Um, I think that's a very easy way to create an element that, you, that can come in uh, very handy later. Here's one I did earlier on um, tissue paper, which is really soft and nice. And you can also, if you want to glue it on, you can also use, uh, you know, wrinkle it a bit and, uh, and use it that way. So you create more texture and depth in your, um, in your piece. Let's just, oh, why not? Let's just do this thing. There we go. I have not used this for a very long time, so it might have been dried out. This is just really a fantastic opportunity to, um, 
to finally use all your art supplies. Now this is totally dried out. I can't do this right now. But you will understand what I mean. And I could use a gesso. But again, I don't have the patience right now and I just want to show you a lot of things. So um, here's, here's a piece of that uh, black paper that I showed you before. This could definitely also be put in here. And I think what's important with um, mixed media journaling and with um, uh, collage is repetition. So if, for example, I choose to put this here, I can make that color repeat somewhere over here and I could do more like that, you know, and parts of this I can put more of it here. Um, so that I hope you get the, my drift. You catch my drift. Okay, so those are some elements that you can use right away or that you can make on beforehand and then they might come in very, very handy. Uh, other elements that you could make you could just use lined paper. It could be interesting. And I have these um, those uh, poster paint sticks here. They are round, so I gather that if I do this, I can create a great pattern. I actually think that would be great here too, just right on the on the paint. How cool is that? You can, of course, use that on top of the rest too. You can. That way you can layer again. So it's all about layering. You can make a whole page of this or just use, you know, like one row, something like so. Mark making, I think, is really important when, um, uh, when preparing for your pages. Because you won't be using the, the things very literal. You will just, you know... Um, tear out stuff, rip off, rip things out. For example, here I'm using the, um, the acrylic ink, which has this really handy distributor. You can just make some really cool marks with that. Or you can draw a flower or a sun. You can do anything and then you can use parts of it. You can Use it very thickly. And then, once we are doing that anyway, here's like a pool of paint. Use your fingers. Finger painting. Let's go back to finger painting. How great and organic does this look? So you can make so many different marks with this. And I'm. it looks chaotic, but can you imagine how cool it is to just use a part of this and incorporate that into this page that I already started. I think that would be really, really fun to do. Um, what else can I show you? Same goes for um, stamping. Use those fingerprints. It will be so you. I mean, a fingerprint is the most unique thing that you have. So if you use it for your art journaling, for your mixed media art journaling, it's um, it's it's very, very personal. And it's really part of you. And also, it's just beautiful. Just the, the, um, the shape and the lines that you create with that one fingerprint. I think it can be really, really beautiful. And look at that. I mean, just the organic use of ink and it runs out a little bit and then you take some new I mean I can just see a whole page filled with, with this being beautiful already and then you um, you add only more and more and more okay a messy a pretty messy page I just made and a half sort of half page that I started, but I can I see potential in that gray page. I don't really like the gray actually. Um, I I think I would choose yellow or red, something that is a little bit more chipper. But um, I will definitely work a little bit more on this page. 
um, as I go and as I'm learning. One other thing that is super important, apart from the baby wipes, <laughs> is that um, you will actually put paint on your computer if you do this live. That's what I just did. Um, also, um, you will need to think about um, the um, uh, if you are using water-based materials or materials that are actually um, uh, um, water um, resistant because if you are layering you just like I did with that um, with that stamp that I just smooched because it was still wet and also you know it's not water resistant um, you can use the the color of this the stamp that you just put down um, and paint with it but if you really want to hold on to the pattern that you made then you may need to make sure that you do that with um, acrylic paint for example or with uh, ink that is uh, not water soluble so those are things that you need to think about and we will probably all make the mistake of starting with something and then it turns out to smudge completely but I think you can work with it um, I think um, mixed media art journaling is all about playing, having some fun with all the stuff that you can that you can make, that you can find. I mean, I have a random ribbon here that came off of one of my uh, uh, sketchbooks, and um, I'm pretty sure that I can actually glue that into one of my pieces. So um, yeah, start collecting. Start. Maybe you can start a box with um, collected items. I will definitely do that to uh, keep myself a little bit organized and know where is what. And um, yeah, let's make some art. Um, and also, uh, that's something that Priscilla points out. It's so freeing, you cannot make any mistakes. Because there are no mistakes, you're just doing this thing and having fun with the ink and the paint and the and the, all the pieces of collage and um, anything goes, everything is fine, you know. It will be so much fun to play. I will be taking this course as a student. I would love you to be my classmate. So maybe you've signed up. Well, that's fantastic. I'll see you in class on Monday. But if you haven't signed up yet, I really would love you to um, to be there to sign up go to sketchbookschool.com let's see where I can fit this in uh, Van Gogh's room um, go to sketchbookschool.com sign up for mixed media journaling there are four amazing artists in there who teach and they make incredible art and it's super inspiring and not intimidating so that's very important, and we can all do this. So no mistakes, no rights, no wrong, just you play and all the, mater the materials that you have. And then maybe one week in, you might go for that gesso, 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 I guess so, um, or something else that you've seen in class that you think, I need to have that. That's fine, but don't go and buy all kinds of stuff. You have a lot to work with. All right, well, thank you so much for uh, joining me today. It was fun. I have made a mess. I hope it wasn't really smart to put on something white. Uh, I hope everything is still clean. Maybe I should actually find myself an apron for this course. Go to sketchbookschool.com, sign up for mixed media journaling, and I will see you in class. Thanks so much. Bye.